Hey guys, today I wanted to make a video about Shocklands and Fetchlands and why they have not moved. I have pinpointed it to two reasons and I would love, I mean, let's have a good discussion in the comment sections below. Uh, the Fetchlands and Shocklands, especially the Shocklands, given that RTR was like four years ago or three years ago, it was a long time ago RTR was and I love the set. I still do. But the set was so long ago that uh, the prices should have gone up, but they have not. They have gone down or stabilized. The same with the fetch lands. A lot of people are asking why are the fetch lands not going up. Uh, there are two reasons for this. Uh, reason number one is supply. Reason number two is modern is not being promoted. So people are saying, oh, modern is growing. It's growing. I don't see it growing in my locals. I don't see growing at other people's locals and it's not a pro tour format. It's a GP format, but that's kind of ridiculous for a format to be in GP and not be in the pro tour, right? So when you talk about uh, modern, it is probably going to go the way of legacy, uh, where it means Wizard Coast is not supporting modern. It will make money for modern. Modern Masters 2017 is on the horizon, but it's not going to give camera time to modern. It's not going to as much camera time. It's not going to be, you know, as heavily promoted in F and M. So, from Wizard of Coast's standpoint, they want you to buy standard cards. They want you to draft. They want you to do sealed because that's how they make money. The majority of the money is selling packs. So it does not make. If every time they support modern, it is a time that you're not supporting standard, which means they're making less money. So I'm not too modern's very healthy today. But my biggest concern about modern and the reason that these cards, in my opinion, are not going up as much as they used to is because modern is, there's not any new players. Cards go up if the supply, if there's more demand than there is supply, there's no demand. There's just no demand for more fetch lands. There's no demand for uh, more shock lands. And shock lands especially are not four ofs in many decks. There are two, three ofs, maybe even a one of. Uh, fetch lands is the more interesting scenario where you do have something that is highly coveted and everyone knows it's extremely valuable but its price point might stick around like this for a while so when uh, you also have the potential reprints of zendikar which is you know supposedly put pushing down the prices of the collins ones which is kind of interesting to um, make a note of and the large print supply. So Conjure Tarkir, you can still buy boxes for $90, I believe, on Dave and Adams. You can buy a box for under 100 on most websites. My local still has a ton of boxes. My local has a ton of boxes for RTR. I think all these stores in Houston are sitting on a ton of inventory from RTR and Gatecrafts. My, um, the store owner that I talked to, uh, he was going to set the price at like $75 a box if I bought a case or more of RTR or Gatecrash. But, I mean, it looks like Rudy from Alpha Investments is getting it for under $70 a box because he's selling it at $70 a box. Uh, so that's pretty, cra that's pretty crazy to me. He's selling it for $70 worth shipping. So let's say shipping is at least 5 bucks. He's getting it for at least $65 or less. And that's not a price that would surprise me. And we're talking about a box or a shock lance, abrupt decay. I mean, Death Rush Shaman has been reprinted, but still a good card. Uh, Revelation, a rest in peace, all these fantastic cards. You can get a box for $65 or under. Like, what? <laughs> four years ago, four or five years ago. I mean, that is insanity to me. That is something that I would never have imagined. And that's also why when I say like about, you know, whenever I talk bad about MTG Finance, people assume that it is, uh, you know, negative and then people who are not subscribed will say, oh, I'm going to unsubscribe, which they like, that doesn't really make sense why you'd say that. But for the most part, it's because I want you to know it's changed. It has changed. It used to be when Dissension came out, sit, just don't trade your shock lands away. Hold on to your shock lands. Hold on to your Zendikar fetch lands. Oh, look, the price is double. The price is triple. The price is, I mean, you look at Misty Rainforest at $12 when Star City Games makes that buy, and it hit 100 at one point. I don't see that ever happening for Carnage of Tarkir. I don't see that ever happening for.
for the Shocklands. I mean, Shocklands were $35, $45 at one time before the reprint. And crazy, like same with uh, Commander cards, like Kalia and stuff. Reprints are going to, and I agree with reprints. I absolutely support, 100% support reprints. Uh, but they make it so that you are not going to, at any time, you have a lot of danger. This could be reprinted. If you're sitting on 200 cards and they're not on the reserve list, they can reprint that card. And that is the correct way, in my opinion, to do it. So therefore, MTG Finance has changed. It is necessary to say this. Um, the only people who make money from MTG Finance are the people who write articles or who own blogs about MTG Finance because they get monthly fees regardless of what the card price is. Everyone else, I mean, is pretty much a uh, crapshoot. You would be better off buying an actual lottery ticket probably. <laughs> anyway. Bye guys.